Hello and welcome to a demo called Print Selection, Optimization and the Glorious Client Log Recording Database Parameter. My name is Brent Raymond. I organize 40method.com. Uh, we meet uh, every six weeks or so to discuss 40 and Wakanda related topics. You can see our schedule on the website under the schedule tab and a little bit more about us under about. So coming to the demo, um, this code, uh, this sample database, will be available on the 40 method GitHub account uh, for you to work through the examples yourself. Let's take a quick look at it. Um, it's a very basic demo. We have uh, one table. Take a look at the structure real quick. Uh, just an ID, some text in a field, and then another text in another field. Um, we have a table-based form that can be used as a list form and therefore used with print selection quite easily. And we have a list box form, uh, which will also show how to, uh, how to use for printing. Um, the demo goes through uh, uh, the difference between the print selection command, which itself is very old, uh, it's found its way into most 40 databases, if not only because uh, at least historically uh, standard generated 40 forms um, would have a print selection button on them and it would use this particular command. So it's something that you'll see widely in the 40 uh, coding environments. Um, but as of recent versions of 40, there are certainly other ways of printing uh, and printing quite nicely including printing uh, list box objects and other ways of course. Um, so to see a little bit of the documentation we go to the documentation website with a you can highlight the command and hit F1. Um, in looking through uh, the, the command it actually looks like it might say a little something about running it uh, from server, but uh, um, one thing you'll find if you, if you look a little bit further is that uh, the print selection command actually loads each record in 4D individually as it's being printed, whether or not its data is being printed, uh, wh whether or not every field in that record is being printed. Um, doesn't say that here, but we'll be able to demonstrate that not only through performance, but through proof using the client log recording database parameter uh, in this demo. So let's try and get to that because there's a few things I'd like to get to. Uh, quickly, I'll, I'll go over uh, the code that we have here. Um, we're going to use a record count of a thousand records. You can play with this to make it 500 records, 20 records. 10,000 records, whatever you want. Uh, we'll just use 1,000 for the purpose of this demo. Um, we're just setting up the print to use preview, so it doesn't, uh, it won't need to, uh, it won't be dealing with printing to files or any of that kind of thing. It's certainly not printing to actual printers. Uh, we're creating some test data by uh, just blowing out the table, creating some test data, some sample text, and pushing it into the two fields. Uh, some text and another text. They will be the same text in every single one of the records. Then we have a, a sample of printing by print selection. We do a quick page setup uh, to set print selection as the form, uh, to initialize the printing with print selection, the print selection form. And then we uh, will we'll time it using this variable, milli1 and all records print selection. Very simple, um, very elegant in the fact that it's a, it's a one-liner and we all like one-liners, um, except it works a little bit differently than, uh, than uh, more optimized ways. So then we see a, an approach using a list box. Again, we're timing the operation. Uh, we're pulling the data down into arrays, which itself takes advantage of the uh, multiprocessor uh, um, capabilities of the 4D 
server engine, database engine. So it will, all this data will be, data will be retrieved in a multi-processor uh, environment. Um, we are creating a printing job, so it in itself will uh, is a, a bit more modern of an approach. It will um, dedicate the printer to this job while the uh, while it's being processed, uh, so on and so forth. Here we're loading the print list box form, and we're setting the uh, the coordinates for the objects. We're printing the objects until there's no more data uh, that needs to be printed in that list box, um, and all of that is uh, is done through here and. Printing uh, data with list boxes, while it's interesting, is not going to be the focus of this demo. So you can examine this code on your own. Um, and it's also possible to print out things like a summary if necessary. Um, however, it uh, uh, doesn't mean you have to do that. Uh, it, it, that in itself uh, changes any of the, the functionality that I really want to show. You close it. And, and then the job is processed. So let's go ahead and run both of these and take a look at the processing time. Um, I'm currently running in, uh, in standalone mode, not server client, but I will start it up in server client mode in just a moment once we run this quick test. So it's processing and it does two very similar looking print jobs, the first one being uh, the print selection and the second one being the, uh, the print from the list box. Look identical, no difference there, um, so not too much to see except for the fact that you can do the same thing with either approach. However, if you look at the processing times, okay, they're not too different uh, when you're running it in standalone. However, you start to really see a difference when you get to server client. Uh, now the first one uh, is a little bit more currently and, and that's a normal thing to see, uh, but uh, we'll take a look quickly with it running as a server client and then we'll look at and we'll actually track the, uh, the communication between the server and 4D standalone. So I'm going to start up 4D server here. And go and open the print selection uh, database. And then I'm going to go ahead and connect to that database. And here we are, back where we started. So let's run that same print job one more time. Again, recreating the data. It's a one-to-one -one example. And we'll take a look at the difference in time. So you see that the list box approach is definitely uh, gaining in speed considering the, all the, uh, the connection between the server and client. And I can assure you that um, in the first place, this is a best case scenario. These tables are virtually empty of other data. Um, and on top of that, the server is being run on the same machine as the client. So there, there is no little or no consideration of actual network traffic that uh, uh, that's being demonstrated here. However, it doesn't mean that we can't do that. So you see that the time differences are still uh, are still, and it's it's palpable. You can feel the the time difference. Let's try it one more time to see if we get a uh, uh, a little bit different of a result. And the the list box is still holding at a much, much better timing. However, uh, this value itself perhaps isn't worth the trouble to go through uh, for the added coding that you have to do. So um, let's 
act, let's take a look at the real world situation of what's uh, uh, of what's happening in the background, and get an idea of of what kind of server traffic we're actually generating by uh, by having this somewhat outdated comment uh, or, uh, uh, command that we're using. So to begin with, we're going to locate our logs folder. So in here, it's our logs folder that we have uh, for this particular client, uh, running client. Um, there's no logs in it currently because we haven't activated any. So let's go ahead and we don't need to create any more test data, so we'll just stop that for right now. But we'll enable the client log recording for the print selection. And then we will grab that data and do the same thing for the print list box. So let's go ahead and run that. And you have to turn it on and turn it off right when, right before the, the thing that you're wanting to test and right after the thing that you're wanting to test or else other messages will start to build up in there that don't, uh, don't have to do with what you're trying to track. Okay, we have the same report as expected and we have the log information so I'll just put a little print selection name next to that and I'm gonna throw that on my desktop and just delete this one so then we'll try this again and I'll disable the print selection code and I'll enable the client log recording and the list box code and do the same thing. There we go, we have the same report as expected and I will call this list box. I'm going to steal it, put it down here, and then we're done with this part of the demo, and so I'm going to put it into the background. Same thing with the server. So we've got these two logs of all of the traffic that happened uh, with, the, uh, with the, the print jobs that we just made. Now, a lot of... Uh, older oops excel uh, a lot of older applications uh, will uh, will start to experience network slowdowns and and it's very confusing because it doesn't look like much code is running and 4D is just doing its thing it why should uh, you know how can i optimize one line of code uh, it's doesn't seem like it's possible or necessary. But let's just take a look at what 4D is doing in the background and then we'll wrap this up. So if you see here, these are all the calls that 4D made to the server uh, for one print selection command. Um, we're, we're going on almost 2,000 calls to the server which the calls themselves have their own cost. I mean, you know, it's a, it's a round trip to the server. And not only that, but there's a lot of data that's being, uh, that, that's being transmitted uh, back and forth between the server. And, uh, and let's just take a look at, say, um, the bytes out. Okay, so we'll do sum of H4 to H, what do we say? Doesn't matter, right? 2500. So we see that that much data uh, in bytes got transmitted over 2,000 calls 
to the server. Uh, which it just I can't stress the amount of uh, of server abuse, server badgering, terrible server performance that that's going to uh, to generate. Okay, so that's nice. What about the list box? Sixteen calls to the server, and I'll do a quick sum of the data that went over the network. Again, H4 to, well, in this case, H18. That ought to do it. So 60,000 bytes as compared to the other one, which was 192,000 bytes. Uh, and again, 2,000 trips to the server and back, whoops, compared to 16. So in short, you can use the database parameter for client log recording to do your own testing and, and seeing how efficient some of your code is. So if you try say recoding a, or a, a one part of your program uh, to take advantage of new commands, new functionality, new approaches, uh, new ways of doing things, you can use these this client log recording to actually monitor the specific network traffic of a particular process in your application. And with that, that's about as much as I wanted to, uh, to, to show. But uh, again, in the same manner as my previous demo with uh, apply to selection, if you've got a lot of print selection going on in your application and you're starting to see some, uh, some network slowdowns or uh, server performance issues, uh, it might be a good idea to, to take a look at uh, refactoring and, uh, and revising those print selection commands to use a, a more modern approach. Anyways, uh, come see us at 40 Method. Got a lot more demos like this and a lot more coming um, and some very interesting uh, guest demos uh, during our meetings. So hope to see you there. Thanks a lot.